Hi, I'm Trawler Specialist Jeff Merrill. I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Douglas Cochran. Jeff and I have teamed up to make a series of videos called The Physics of Docking. Hello, I'm Douglas Cochran, here with part four of our series on the physics of docking. In this sequence, we're going to go through some of the steps to be considered before we reach a marina or an anchorage at the end of a long run. So Douglas, I feel like we've been at sea for days. It's time to get back to the marina. We're gonna head into the marina, and what exactly should we do to get ready for that? Well, first of all, we wanna make sure that everybody is prepared to, and knows what's gonna happen. So we're gonna go through a list of things that uh, we think are good procedures to have on your boat. Every time you come into the dock, you make sure that everybody is aware of if what's going If you have a routine and a checklist, then you're not gonna forget something. Yeah, and you're not gonna get into a tight fairway and go, oops, who put out the fenders? Yeah, so. yeah, now there's definitely a sequence and a procedure. Let's, let's see what you have to say on that. Good, let's go. In this sequence, we're going to go through some of the steps to be considered before we reach the marina or anchorage at the end of a run. If you've been underway for more than a few hours, it's a good idea to run the engine up to wide open throttle for five or 10 minutes. The primary purpose of this is to heat up the engine and blow out the carbon. Running for long periods of time at fuel efficient speeds tends to clog up the engine and routinely blowing it out is good for it. It also ensures that your engine is capable of running wide open for an extended period of time if you ever need it. Most marine engines are designed to run at wide open throttle for hours without damage. If you're trying to outrun a hurricane or hurrying to reach a harbor entrance at slack tide, it's good to know that your engine has been regularly exercised and will perform as required. Before we start the festivities, it's a good idea to make sure that everybody's in good shape physically. We give them all a little bite to eat so we don't have any blood sugar issues. We encourage everybody to go to the head so that they don't uh, stop in the middle of their duties. All set? I'm ready, yeah, let's do it. Why don't you have a quick bite? Oh, I There's love some... it. These are apricots, aren't they? Yeah, Good yeah, man. they're good. Yeah, I'll have one too. Thanks. Okay, I think we're ready to get going here. So before we prepare to dock, we wanna make sure our crew is fully ready to go outdoors safely. And so that starts with these two-way radios which are called marriage savers. Because we can communicate comfortably be with each other, we don't have to shout or whistle or wave our arms. It makes it much easier to keep the, the tension level down. One feature I like about these is they obviously fit easily over your head, but you have one ear for listening and the other ear open for natural sounds if you're talking to somebody else on the dock or another crew member who's not wearing the headsets. So let's make sure we're working. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I hear you fine. Good, good. Now let me point out one thing that's very important on these. You've got the wire that runs down. You'll see that what we've done is fed the wire underneath the life jacket so that it won't hook on something as he's uh, going around rigging up the boat. Otherwise, what can happen is it yanks the wire out of the sender. He's still talking, I'm not hearing anything, and the tension level goes up. Yeah, they don't work really well without the, uh, the pack on there, and the packs don't float. So if you do drop one overboard, don't worry, you can buy a replacement. Hopefully you won't need to. Yeah, they're not cheap. I'm also wearing a inflatable vest so that uh, I'm just gonna be safe for walking around. It's not like a life jacket. I have full mobility. And in the event that something happens and I fall overboard, there's a cartridge that will fill up with air and I'm gonna be able to float to the surface. It's generally a good idea to set up dock lines and fenders on both sides of the boat. Even if you're sure you'll be docking on one side or the other. If you're surprised by a sudden gale or strong currents or heavy traffic in the marina, it's good to be able to change plans suddenly and dock on the other side. So one thing that I like to do before I actually get into a tight space in a marina is to make sure that all my controls are working adequately before I get into a place where I have to have them. So what that means to me is I first I shift into neutral, wait a few seconds for the prop to slow down, shift into reverse, just to make sure that my reverse does work. We had a friend whose cable broke on the control and he smacked the dock good and hard, so you don't want that. The other thing I like to do is to test my thrusters. So I push them one way and the other, make sure that works. Push them one way, the other, make sure that one works. Now we know that everything should work when we get in there. Let's go on in and make our landing. A final step in preparation is planning. Be sure to communicate with your crew about what the plan is for docking or anchoring. Jeff, can you hear me? 
We're going into slip A6 to starboard as we enter the fairway. A6 should be just past a big blue boat called Last Boat Number 3. We'll stop and back in with a starboard tie. Would you come up on the bow and keep a watch for any traffic? Thanks. Well, Douglas, I know you've given this a lot of thought and you've come into many marinas. Can you talk us through how you prepare when you're coming into a marina? Well, as a master of the stupid captain trick, I've learned a lot of mistakes. And so what we did is developed a written procedure that we went through on all of our uh, returns from sea. And it covers everything from feed the crew, drain the crew, talk to the crew, make sure everybody knows what their responsibilities are, get your lines out right, get the fenders out right, and agree on what slip you're coming into and which way you're going to dock. Yeah, you want to have a game plan and you want to follow that game plan. And if you learn something uh, on, on a trip, then you can incorporate that into the, into the game plan for the next time. And uh, it's very critical to be flexible because oftentimes you'll get into a, a marina and suddenly find that the slip you wanted was, yeah. is not available or is too small or the wind is blowing wrong or the tides are carrying you sideways and you can't back in so you're going to go in forwards. So whatever happens... I know I've never made a mistake coming into a, a, a slip. No, the point I think I want to say is that sometimes you have to abandon or abort the trip and, and retry. There's no harm in doing that. When you crunch the boat, you got to fix it. It's better to bail out and, and try again, live to fight another day. Yes, and that's one reason we talked about how to pivot the boat and get back out. You go outside, reconsider your plan, and come back in again and try again. Fantastic. With luck, you can fool everyone in the harbor into thinking you know what you're doing. In our next sequence, we'll begin talking about how to actually dock your boat. So stay tuned. More good stuff coming up. Hi Trawler fans, thank you for watching the JMYS YouTube video channel. You can subscribe by clicking the button below, and if you'd like to watch one of our other listings or check out one of our other Trawler Skills videos, you can click on one of those on the side. Thanks, and we hope to see you back here again soon.